Hi, good morning. My name is Kelly, and welcome to my vlog. I speak here about cancer, climate change, and consciousness, and the connections between them. Um, sometimes I speak about one more than the other. My husband was diagnosed with cancer in June of this past year, 2022, and um, it really kind of popped the lid on a lot of different things for me, and made me start seeing connections between things that I might have loosely seen before, but not in the way that I am now. Um, so this morning, I'm feeling drawn to speak about something I've been chewing on since Sunday. Um, I received some interesting comments back about a post I was doing, and the post I was doing, I was kind of smack in the middle of a really hard moment. Um, and I'm, I'm feeling drawn to speak of the caregiver's role. I, I'm a caregiver. I don't have cancer. My husband does. Um, I did have at one point in time a, a little kind of area that needed to be removed, but I in no way experienced anything at all related to what, like, like what my husband is going through. So I can't speak about that. Um, that's for him to speak about, but I can speak about my observations. I can also speak about like what it's like to be the caregiver. And I feel drawn to speak about that because as an occupational therapist for 30 years, um, as a coach, you know, I've, I've worked with tons of people. I've ministered to people. I have been a therapist for people. I've walked many, many people through really hard times and I've kind of intentionally selected some hard times for myself, um, through various adventures and, um, and just life, you know, um, but being in the role of caregiver <laughs> is a whole different thing. And the comment that was made was sort of like, stop the woe is me and your husband's the one who's going through this, not you. So be grateful that it's not you. And let me just say this. I am so grateful that I am in this role and not in his. Um, I would, um, I would not want to trade places with him for any money in the world. That is a hard, hard journey. Um, and the role of caregiver, um, I'm speaking of this because I, I, I have listened to so many caregivers talk and I hear them kind of off to the side say, it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Like this is hard. And I'm like, yeah, it is hard. I know. And how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know? And I've like listened as the therapist and as the minister and as the whatever else. And now I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> this is freaking hard. It's hard to be the caregiver 24 seven and like do all of the juggling. And in some ways it feels like a very thankless position to be in. And so I want to give it some airtime because a lot of people in our world are in that caregiver role and they're doing this thankless job. And, and it's lovely on the days when you hear thank you. Um, but there's a lot of times where it's like, my kids are like, mom, like, come on. Why can't you do more for me? Why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? Or, um, you know, or it's just my own internal dialogue. Like, why can't I show up in the ways that I'm used to showing up in the world? Well, duh, because something else came in and took up space in my life. Um, and it takes space in the caregiver's life. And so then you come down to like, it's choices. Like, where am I going to put my attention and energy? And um, I am so grateful. I'm grateful to be in this role. And I'm not saying that like kidding. I, I'm grateful to understand what it's like to walk in these shoes and to understand the position my mom was in for 15 years, to understand the position that the caregivers of my patients have been in for the 30 years that I've been an occupational therapist. Um, to understand just like what what is that like um, so last Sunday I was kind of venting I was in a hard spot and I had to do some reflecting because I'm like I don't want to put the energy out here that woe is me but I do want to speak truthfully and 
honestly about this role because it's a real role that a lot of people fill and there are moments that are hard and I can be like superhuman and just deny them but when they pop up I feel like I've committed to being honest and real about what it's like to be in these shoes and so that's what I'm doing and um, as I reflected on what happened last Sunday um, I was tired I had had a couple of nights of very little sleep my body was sort of like with this rush of adrenaline coursing through it in anticipation of my husband's next hospitalization. I was thinking of, okay, what happens if that ICU experience happens again? What if his bowels can't handle this chemo and then E. coli leaks into his bloodstream and he is, he goes septic again? what if you know all of those what ifs which creep up a whole lot more when you're tired um, when you haven't had enough rest when things are in disarray so I can't speak enough to like the importance of sleep on this journey the importance of self-care and self-care can be like just sit down and have breakfast it can be stop and take a few deep breaths. It can be ground in this moment right now and feel the earth beneath your feet because it's solid and right there for you. <laughs> Look up at the beautiful sky. And so yes to all of those things and yes to like my gratitude for being in this role versus the role that my husband's in. And also like it's okay to have hard days. It's okay to have hard moments. And I think we need to be truthful with one another about them because when we're in a hard moment, if we just put on the happy face and say, oh, I'm good, I'm good, yeah, great. You know, yeah, my husband's going into the hospital, but I'm good. No, there's moments where it's like, no, I don't feel good. <laughs> I'm scared, I'm worried, I'm having a hard moment and it feels like the shit's hitting the fan. So, but you know what? The moment I do that, the moment I get truthful and honest about it, it like moves, moves me. I move to a different place by the very act of sharing it. So that's what I've dedicated a lot of this blog to is just sharing so that I can get from one moment to the next and keep going on this journey of partnering with my husband through this and partnering him with him through whatever course of treatment he chooses for himself and he feels he needs for himself. And right now, um, that is, was stem cell transplant. He's now entering into another treatment that is very much like CAR T cell, but it's a trial, um, a new trial. So, um, the other thing that I, I, um, the comment referenced was like, you know, stop putting time to climate change and stop talking about that. Like your kids need you, your husband needs you. Um, I actually had a conversation with my kids and my husband about this because I'm like, do you guys want me to stop? Like, I, I really literally attend a meeting a week, but I have devoted, like I've dedicated myself to speaking of this openly, to talking about climate change and how it weaves into everything and affects everything. And because one of the most important things we can do is talk about it. And there's not enough dialogue about it. I hear there's like way more dialogue and way more airtime to everything else. But holy shit, <laughs> you know, this is like a real thing and it needs airtime and we've got to give it airtime and we have to start talking about ways that we can weave action into the midst of the busyness of everyday life and climate change is not going to stop. Um, for us to focus on other things. It's not going to wait for cancer to be over before it continues to, to rage on and impact places all around the world. Um, like what's happening right now in California. I have a dear friend who like the back of their house just slid off a cliff. Um, it, it didn't always have that much cliff space right behind the house, but over time it has eroded and down it went with the floods so um and 
they are lucky ones because there's a whole lot of people who have lost their homes altogether. Um, there's a whole lot of other people who don't even have a home to begin with. So um, I'm very mindful that there are a whole lot of people in this world who are going through a whole lot more than I am. Um, but I also believe that I'm learning things in going through my own hard time that might be useful if I share them openly. Um, maybe not. If they're not, I assume you're not listening anymore. You've tuned off a long time ago. So, um, so, what is me and climate change? <laughs> I think those are the two points I wanted to speak to today. And I also wanted to just like speak a little bit more about um, why I speak about the role of caregiver and why it's important to me to be honest about what it's like because there's a lot of people out there doing it and they don't say anything um, and they show up for the doctor's appointments and they're sitting on the sidelines and they're running all the errands and doing all this stuff um, all the time and God bless them <laughs> because um, our healthcare system would be a whole heck of a lot more taxed than it already is if we didn't have them. So if you are a caregiver, God bless you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And um, that's all for today. Peace.